All right, so I'm back in the lab environment. And as you can see, you will be provided with access to a Kali Linux system that's already ready to go. And uh, a notepad uh, will be already waiting for you that will provide you with the IP addresses of the two systems uh, that we're going to need to access. And in this case, we're not performing lateral movements. Uh, what that means is that one of these systems is going to be inaccessible to us. And I'm assuming, I'm guessing, it's going to be Victim Machine 2. Now, remember that uh, your lab will provide you with different IP addresses for the victim systems or the victim machines. So do keep that in mind that every lab instantiation is unique and uh, the IP addresses that you'll get will be unique. So ensure that you use the IP addresses in your lab if you're following through um, with this. So, for example, if I ping the IP address of victim machine 2, you can see that, aha, we cannot reach it or we cannot ping it. But if I try the IP address for victim machine one, we should be able to access it. And this sets up the premise for pivoting uh, quite well. So I'm just going to ping it. Um, there we go. And we can see that we can ping victim machine one, but not two. And I'll just do it one more time so you can see it. Uh, there we go. So I'll ping victim machine two again, and you can see we cannot reach it. So this in essence, and again, I hate to be repeating myself, but this sets up the premise for pivoting. So we can access one system, one target system, but uh, victim machine two, ideally, we would be blind to or we would not know exists. Uh, we cannot access through our current network. And uh, you can see that uh, this is the current uh, IP associated with the interface Ethernet one on my Kali Linux system. In your case, it'll be different. But for whatever reason, from our IP or from this network, we cannot access victim uh, machine two. So that means we're supposed to target victim machine one, try and gain access to it, and then use it as a pivot point or a hop point um, or a proxy, if you will, to allow us to communicate with victim machine two. Uh, presumably, uh, the other requirement here is that victim machine one can communicate with victim machine to otherwise, uh, you know, a pivot would not be possible. But with that being said, we can perform a quick nmap scan on victim machine one. And let's see what services are running. All right, we can see it's a Windows. Um, it's a Windows system. Uh, and we have the RPC ports, SMB port 3389 for RDP. And we have a web server running on port 80. So let's limit our scan to port 80 a little bit or you know for the sake of this demonstration so i'll just say perform a service version scan on port 80 and let's see what we have running on port 80 all right so we'll give this a few seconds uh when on windows uh we can always speed up the scan but looks like we have uh, http file server version 2.3 which again uh, we can actually confirm by opening up our web browser because that is a web server we can see, yes, it is indeed running the Regetto HTTP file server, which again is vulnerable to a particular exploit. So we can use search exploit to search for Regetto. And uh, we're looking for the HTTP file server 2.3. And um, if we just zoom out a little bit here, and I'm just going to show you this right now, and I'm just going to run it again. Um, there we are. It looks like we have a Metasploit module for that. So I'm just going to open this up. And because we're performing this uh, with Metasploit, that's why I'm using that particular module and not a manual, um, a manual command. So there we are. We have Metasploit running, and I'm now just going to search for Regetto. There we go. And uh, we have the exploit there. So uh, this is for the Regetto HTTP file server, and it's a remote command execution exploit, or rather targets of vulnerability that will, uh, again, provide us with remote command execution. So I'll just say, use module zero. And uh, now the default payload selected there is going to be the 32-bit interpreter, which is fine. And uh, we need to set the, uh, let's check out what options we have available here. And the L host has already been configured to the IP address of my Kali Linux system. In your case, make sure that that, again, is set to your Kali Linux IP. If it's not, you can always set it. Remember, the interface is Ethernet 1. 
uh, for the module options, we just need to configure the R host option because our port is uh, the R port option is set to port 80, which in this case is applicable as the web server is running on port 80 on victim machine one. So I'll just say set R hosts to the IP address of victim machine one. And now I will just hit exploit and uh, let's see if we get a interpreter session. All right, indeed we do. Um, there we go and we'll just wait for it to pop up and uh, we can then move on to the next phase so let's perform some general enumeration here we can see that it's running um this operating this system is running windows server 2012 um what privileges do we have uh administrator privileges and uh you know we can actually view the um the privileges at a granular level and yeah that is a fully elevated session so if we type in iap config we can see that uh, this particular system victim machine one has a loopback address which is fine and then there's another address here which i believe um uh is uh yeah that corresponds to the publicly exposed ip right over here so that's interface 21 and um, if we take a look at any other adapters, uh, yeah, so it looks like it's only this network here and we can print the routing table. There we are and we can see that, uh, let's see if we can find any particular routes. So from this particular IP, um, we can also check the this one right over here. So yeah, it looks like we should be able to communicate with victim machine two from victim machine one. So we can just copy this here, the IP address of victim machine two, and um, we can just ping it. So I'm just gonna open up a shell session here, and I'm gonna say ping, paste in the IP of uh, victim machine two, and indeed we can reach victim machine two from victim machine one, and the second requirement has been satisfied. So, that means that we have our pivot system or our hop point or our proxy, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to terminate that particular channel and return to Meterpreter. So first things first, uh, we don't know what's running on victim machine two. And uh, realistically speaking, in order to gain access to that system, we need to know what services are running on it and whether we can leverage any of those services for initial access, regardless of you know, whether the, it is uh through a credential reuse or via a an unpatched piece of software that again is vulnerable to a particular exploit etc now what we can do is uh we can uh the, the first thing we need to do is configure the route or network route and uh, the way this works in metasploit is we can utilize the system that we have access to the pivot system and uh, configure it as that proxy point and essentially use it to set up a route uh, that then that we can then use to communicate with victim machine two uh, through victim machine one. And uh, the, the way this can be done is through the auto route uh, command. And uh, in this particular case, what we would need to do is take a look at the interface here and we can see that the IPv4 netmask is 255, 255 to 40.0, um, which means we can just copy the IP. And again, in your case, it'll be different, but we can say run auto route and uh, we'll specify the subnet and we need to specify the subnet CIDR. So that would be 0, .0 or dot zero forward slash 20, just given the uh, the actual net mask right over here and we can see there we are it's going to add a route to that particular subnet and it's going to do so via victim machine one so what this means is now within metasploit we can actually communicate with victim machine two through victim machine one okay so the first thing we want to do and i'll show you how we can actually expose this to the kali linux system System outside of Metasploit with something like the SOX proxy in the next set of videos. But for now, let's work within Metasploit. I'm going to put this Meterpreter session in the background and we're going to search for the Metasploit uh, port scan module um, as we need to perform a port scan 
uh, on victim machine two. So we're going to use option five, which is the TCP port scanner. And uh, we're going to set the R hosts to the IP address of victim machine two right over here. So I'm just going to copy that. And again, in your case, make sure you use your victim machine two IP address. And then the ports, we're just going to limit it to maybe uh, one to hundred. Uh, and again, this is for the sake of simplicity here. And we can then hit exploit or run. And that's going to perform a port scan on victim machine two on the ports one to 100. And let's see what ports are open on the target. And indeed, we can see we have a web server. So we know that the uh, that the network route is working. So we have port 80 running. And uh, of course, we can take this to the next level. And, um, you know, we, we can take it to the next level and perform maybe a service version scan. But how do we do that? We know that port 80 is open on victim machine two. But how do we actually interact with that port? Because, yeah, we have the network route, but uh, we still can't do anything um, with regards to, uh, you know, interacting with it properly or at least performing an Nmap scan. Uh, the way this can be done is through port forwarding and within Metasploit, it is really very simple. And when I'm referring to port forwarding, I'm referring to remote port forwarding where we are forwarding a remote port, uh, um, a port on a remote system to uh, our local system and then interacting with that remote port through the uh, um, through the local port. Um, and that is being proxied through the pivot system or the pivot point. So given that this is going to go through the pivot point, um, I'm just going to go back into my interpreter session and I'm going to use the port forward command and I'm going to say add and then I specify the port that I would like to um, um, I would like to forward uh, the remote port to locally. So what port do I want to forward uh, port 80 on victim machine to? locally um, and this can be anything so this is again the port on the Kali Linux system so we can just go in port one two three four and uh, then we're going to specify the remote port which is going to be port 80 and uh, the remote address is going to be the IP address of victim machine 2 okay so we're essentially forwarding or performing remote port forwarding for port 80 on victim machine 2 to port one two three four on the Kali Linux system which means uh, through the pivot point, which is victim machine one, we should be able to interact with port 80 on victim machine two through port one, two, three, four on our Kali Linux system or on local host. That may seem confusing, but it's really very simple. So there we are, the TCP relay is created. And now if I say port forward uh, list, that'll list our active port forwards. And uh, you can see that uh, there we are, that uh, actually looks uh, correct, unless I, yeah, that looks about right. So port forward add local uh, port, um, and then the remote, yeah, that looks about right. Okay, excellent. So now that we've done that, we can actually open up a new tab, and I want you to pay attention now. If I say netstat antp to list the ports on the Kali Linux system that are currently open, you can see we have port one, two, three, four uh, running, open and running, and that's TCP. And you can see the process ID or program is Ruby, which again indicates Metasploit. So we can now say nmap SV or perform our nmap scan on our local port, and it'll be proxied or um, forwarded to victim uh, to port 80 on victim machine two through uh, victim machine one, which is the pivot point. So I'm going to say, let's perform a service version scan, a SYN scan, um, and the port is going to be one, two, three, four on local host on the Kali Linux system. So I'll hit enter. And uh, this is all going to be forwarded through our pivot point. So you can start to understand why the, um, the system or the pivot point uh, or the system we're using for the pivot can be considered as a proxy because that's what it is doing. Uh, we're using the network route and port forwarding to proxy traffic from a local port to, again, the remote port on a system that we, again, would otherwise not have been able to access. So we can see that it says port one, two, three, four, the local port here uh, tells us that on a victim machine two, 
um, on port 80, we have a web server called Bad Blue running. So what this means now is we can go back into our Metasploit section and we can put uh, into our Metasploit tab and uh, I can just put this Metapreter session in the background and I can search for the exploit module uh, for Bad Blue because it is vulnerable to a buffer overflow. And we're looking for this one right over here. Um, and I can obviously just say search bad blue to get the actual module. So that's module one. And now we can, um, uh, we can, we need to configure this particular module because there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So the first thing you need to be aware of is remember, we still cannot get that system to connect back to us because it doesn't have a network route back to us. We are the ones connecting to it through the system that we're using as the pivot point, which means that a reverse connection or a reverse interpreter session will not work because a reverse shell tells the target system to connect back to you. So it's egress traffic. And because it can't, because again, they, uh, again it's been restricted or there's no route for it to communicate back to us, we need to utilize a bind um, interpreter module so that we can connect back to it, okay, on a particular port. So we're going to set the payload to Windows interpreter bind TCP. So we're binding um, that, or we're going to create a port on, um, we're going to uh, essentially connect to a port on that victim machine too. If I show the options now, uh, what we need to set uh, is the R host, so the target IP. And again, this is going to be facilitated through the route that we added. Um, again, we're essentially sending this through victim machine one. Um, if I say show options, we can see the L port is configured, R host is configured, and um, within bind TCP, the R host is set and L port is 444. So I'll just hit, um, I'll just hit exploit now. And uh, we're going to try and target the bad blue web server running on port 80 on victim machine two. And indeed, in this case, we can see that it has worked and we get a interpreter session. You can see the IP address right over here of victim machine two that we previously could not access. And uh, the only way we could access it is firstly through uh, within Metasploit, the network route. Uh, and secondly, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the port that we forwarded, um, the remote port that we forwarded, which was port 80. All right. So if I say sys info now, you can see that it's uh, windows server 2016. And if I say, you know, get use ID, yeah, pretty much. So, uh, if we take a look at the route here, we can see that there's no route back to that particular subnet or it's limited back just to specific IPs, but that is in essence what pivoting looks like and how it works uh, specifically in the context of Metasploit or the Metasploit framework and more specifically using or leveraging port forwarding, remote port forwarding to be specific. Uh, with that being said, definitely try out this lab again or multiple times in your own free time um, and it, uh, the thing it'll essentially become clearer as you progress. With that being said, that uh, brings us to the end of the practical demonstration section of this video.